So we are still learning new techniques of taking the derivative. We have learned quite a few techniques so far. We have yet to learn two more major techniques. The first of these two is called the quotient rule. Before I actually tell you what the quotient rule is, let us review what techniques that we know up until this point. We learned the first four at the same time, the constant rule, power rule, sum rule, and constant multiple rule. And then we also learned the product rule in the last section. Now the quotient rule is going to follow the product rule very similarly. So if you have the product rule memorized, it should be no big deal to adjust it to come up with the quotient rule. Before I introduce the rule to you, let us go ahead and let's do an example of how we do it without knowing the quotient rule. So this one is a, of course, fraction, a quotient here. G of x equals 6x to the seventh minus 5x to the third, all over 2x squared. And we want to take the derivative of it. Now, we can't take the derivative of it as is because, of course, we don't know that rule yet. So what we have to do in this problem is we have to manipulate it a little bit first. Since we only have one denominator, what we can do is we can write each of these numerators over the denominator individually. So I have 6x to the 7th over 2x squared minus 5x to the 3rd over 2x squared. Now we actually do this quite often, but we typically do it in the reverse order. We typically do this whenever we're trying to add or subtract fractions. We come up with a common denominator, and then we combine the numerators and put that over our LCD. So again, this is a principle that you use all the time. You're just not thinking about it when you're doing it in the opposite order. Okay, I still cannot take the derivative of it because it's still not in the format that we need it to be in. To use our four shortcut rules, we need it to be in the format of a constant times x to some power, plus or minus a constant times x to some power, plus or minus, so on and so forth. So what we need to do here is we need to simplify these two fractions. So first, 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. And x to the 7th over x squared gives me x to the 5th. Minus, second, 5 divided by 2 doesn't simplify, so I'm just going to write that as a fraction of 5 halves. And x cubed over x squared just simplifies to give me an x. Now I'm down to a polynomial, and I can take the derivative of this very easily. So I have g prime of x is equal to 3 times my power of 5, so it gives me 15, x subtract a power to the fourth, minus, we know the derivative of x just gives us 1, so minus my coefficient of 5 halves. So once we know how to convert that or manipulate it, the derivative becomes very easy, and we have our answer here. Now that we've derived this, I'm going to tell you what the quotient rule is, and we're going to do this exact same example by using that quotient rule. So let us learn what it is. And so here is our quotient rule. Notice it looks a lot like the product rule, where we have f and g, but instead of f times g, I clearly have my f of x divided by my g of x. Now, notice the numerator over here is very similar to the same format of our product rule, where we have the original of g times the derivative of f, and then the original of f times the derivative of g. So that's the exact same thing as the product rule. Okay, the thing that did change is now instead of an addition with the product rule, we now have a subtraction. So the product rule is very forgiving because we can rearrange the order of lots of things and it not affect what our overall answer is. Here it does matter, and so that's why I tried to write the product rule in the same order that I wrote the quotient rule. All right. The other thing to keep in mind is whenever you see an f, that's supposed to represent our numerator, and whenever we see a g, that's supposed to represent our denominator. So we have this on top, the bottom times the derivative of the top, minus the original of the top times the derivative of the bottom, but we have this extra part. And it's all divided by the original of the bottom, but we have to square it. 
Okay, so one more time. Here we go. The original of the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the original of the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. There is a simple song to help you memorize this. Anytime we're going to reference the numerator, we're going to call that high. And anytime we reference the denominator, we're going to call that low. So the song goes low d high minus high d low all over low squared. So low d high, meaning the original of the low times the derivative of the high, d high, minus high, original of the high, times the derivative of the low, d low, all over the low squared. Low d high minus high d low all over low squared. So hopefully that helps you memorize this here. All right, back to this example. We want to take the derivative of it this time, but now we want to do it, of course, by using the quotient rule. So everything in my numerator is going to go in my f of x places, and everything in my denominator is going to go in my g of x places. So let's see if we can get this one figured out. g prime of x is equal to the original of the denominator, 2x squared, times the derivative of the numerator, 6 times 7 gives me 42, subtract a power, minus 5 times 3 gives me 15, subtract a power, minus original of the numerator, 6x to the 7th minus 5x to the 3rd, times the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of 2x squared gives me 4x. And that is all over the denominator squared. So all over 2x squared squared. All right, when we simplify this massive thing here, we should get the exact same thing that we got before. So let's see what happens. So first thing I need to do is I need to distribute this here. 2 times 42 gives me 84. x to the 2 plus 6, I add my exponents, x to the 8th. Minus 2 times 15 gives me 30. x squared and x squared gives me x to the 4th altogether. Now here, this is a subtraction. It needs to stay a subtraction, but I have to subtract all of this there. So I'm going to put in an extra parenthesis to help remind me of that. Distribute my 4 here. 6 times 4 gives me 24. x to the 8th, adding my exponents, minus 20x to the 4th. And that is all over my denominator squared. So 2 squared gives me 4, and x squared squared gives me x to the 4th. Now, let me distribute this negative. So I'm going to make it into an addition here, but change my signs there. Or another way to simplify it, instead of doing an extra step here, sometimes I take this negative and I move it to this piece. So I make this a positive, but make that a negative. And so instead, it would be like distributing a negative 4. Okay. Combining my like terms, 84 minus 24x to the 8th gives me a 60x to the 8th. A negative 30 plus 20x to the 4th gives me a negative 10x to the 4th. And that is all over 4x to the 4th. Now I'm going to do the same process that I did when I was trying to take the derivative of this before using the quotient rule. I'm going to put each of my numerators over my denominator. So that way I can simplify it a little bit easier. So now I just need to simplify this. 60 divided by 4 gives me 15. x to the 8th over x to the 4th. Four of my x's cancel out, leaving me with x to the 4th left over. 10 divided by 4, reduce it by 2, gives me 5 halves. And all of my x's cancel out there. So my most simplified version of my derivative, my g prime of x, is equal to 15x to the 4th minus 5 halves. And like we said, this is the exact same answer that we got back here by taking the derivative of it um, when we did not use the quotient rule, when we manipulated it before taking the derivative. Okay. 
So the same question that you probably were asking me with the product rule is when I do it this way, I have just a couple short, easy steps. When I do it by using the quotient rule, I have a much more intense process. So why would I do it using the quotient rule rather than simplifying it before we take the derivative? And the reason is, is because sometimes we cannot simplify it, or sometimes it actually makes it much more complicated when we try and simplify it in the way that we did it. Notice in this example, we only had one piece or one term in the denominator, and it was a very simplified piece. If that becomes any more elaborate, then this way of taking the derivative makes it much more complicated to do that. And so we're going to see some examples of why you don't want to do it this way in the next video when we do some more examples of by taking the derivative using the quotient rule.